Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 7 from the Jan 2010 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so A part 1 is asking us to identify two essential features of cooperatives. So you know me. I'm just going to give you two. I'm going to give you a bit more than that. So we have open membership. Anyone can join. Democratic control. Everybody has an equal say. Continuous education. Kind of self-explanatory. Patronage refund. So that's kind of like dividends to the members. We also have cooperation among cooperatives and then limited interest on capital for members. Okay, that's A part one. Let's take a look at A part two. Okay, so they're asking us to state two similarities between cooperatives and cooperations. Limited liability companies so two marks. So again, you know me, I'm not going to give it just two. So they both have shareholders. They both use appropriation accounts to distribute profits or surpluses according to which one they are. They also pay dividends to the shareholders and they both make transfers to receipts. Long story short, let's take a look at part B. Okay, so it says that the Silver Keys Fisherman's Cooperative Society began operation on Jan 109 with 200 members. Each member purchased 50 shares for $20 each. What are we required to do? Prepare the journal entry to show the start up of the cooperative. Okay, so the journal entry to record the issue of the shares. So we know with general journal entries, right, the debit entries come first, followed by the credit entries, which are indented, and you're going to have a narration or narrative, which is a brief description of the transaction. So if we are issuing shares and we're collecting money, money is coming in, which means cash or bank are going to be affected, they're going to increase. And to record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. Now, for how much? Remember, you had 200 members who bought 50 shares at 20 each. So 200 by 50 by 20 is going to give us $200,000. So you're debiting cash or bank or cash book for $200,000. And the credit is going to go to share capital. And this is to record the startup of the cooperative with the issue of 50 shares each to 200 members for $20 per share. Simple and straightforward. Let's take a look at part C. Okay, so for part C, we're going to take a read through this paragraph here. The Brighton Teachers Credit Union's share capital stands at $300,000. Shares were sold to members at $3 each. So that means that they sold 100,000 shares. Because 100,000 shares by $3 per share gives us the total value of $300,000. Moving on, the credit union's trading and profit and loss account income statement for the year ended June 30th, 2009, showed a surplus of $70,000. So that's what they call their profit, surplus. The undistributed surplus brought forward from June 08 was $55,000. So that's their retained earnings. Undistributed surplus is their version of retained earnings. Now, they are telling us the following. The total available surplus, total available surplus is to be shared in the following manner. We have to transfer 20% to the Teachers Education Development Fund. We have to give 5% to be used as a charitable donation to the school for the hearing impaired. 30% is to be transferred to the loan fund and 25% is paid out as dividends to members. Now, of course, they want us to prepare the credit union's appropriation of profits account for the year ended June 30th, 2009. All right. So let's, of course, head up. Brighton Teachers Credit Union, appropriation of profits account. So we could probably put the A slash C here <coughs> for the year ended 30th, June 2009. So the, so the first thing we're going to start off with is the surplus, the current year surplus of $70,000. So that's the surplus from the current year. And we're also going to put in and add to that the surplus brought forward of $55,000. Now, if you've watched any of my previous or other cooperatives appropriation accounts videos i don't usually do this i leave the surplus brought forward to be added at the end because i like to appropriate out of the current year surplus to show that hey we made enough to make the appropriations for the current year but this question specifically said the total available surplus is to be shared in the following manner which means the surplus from the current year plus the previous years well the, the surplus brought forward so we have a total available surplus of $125,000, which we are going to appropriate. So firstly, we're going to transfer 25% to the Teachers Education Development Fund. So 20% of 125 is 25. Next, we are going to give 5% as a charitable donation to the School for the Hearing Impaired. 
So then we are going to give 30% to the loan fund as a transfer to their reserve, their loan fund, and 25% to be paid out as dividends to members. 25% of the 125 is 31 to 50. Total appropriations amount to 100,000, which will leave us with 25,000 as the undistributed surplus carry forward. Okay, let's take a look at B part two. So they are asking us to calculate the dividend that was paid on each share. Show your workings for $3. Okay, so the dividend per share will require the total dividends paid. So that'll be in the appropriation account, 31,250. And we're going to divide that by 100,000 shares. How did I get that? Because remember the question said, the total share capital is 300,000 and each share was issued at $3 each. So the total value of share capital divided by the value per share gives us a number of shares. And when we divide the total dividend paid by the number of shares, we get 31 and a quarter cents. So 0 0.3125 is 31.25 cents. And that's the dividend per share. Okay, let's take a look at part three. So C part three is asking us to show the return on capital employed. All we have to do is take the current year surplus of $70,000 divide by the value of the share capital employed of 30,000 and we'll express that as a percentage which will be 23.33%, right? So the return on the capital employed again is the surplus or profit expressed as a percentage of what the capital was put into the business. So you put in 300,000 and you earn 70,000. So that's an earnings percentage or earnings rate, sorry, of 23% of what you have invested. Okay, and that's the end of the question. Okay guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question 7 from the Jan 2010 PUA Paper 2. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.